All right. So now we have. Uh, we're just going we right to giveaways here. Yeah. Um, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do a lot of the giveaways um, at the end. Yeah. We're, we're gonna roll we're them up in, in, in the because uh, we are running a little bit behind on time. Um, yep. So we're, we're about twenty minutes now. Um, so we're looking at like a ten thirty end time or somewhere around there, depending on because okay. the uh, the. Um, the Adam Block video is about an hour, so that's going to add another fifteen minutes. So, gotcha, so, gotcha. All right, so then that's the time where we could eat dinner. By the way, so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so on that being said, we have Doctor Sass waiting in the background. Let's flip over to Doctor Sass for my telescope. Hi, hi, Dan and Eric. Very nice to be here. Thank you. Uh, nice to meet you. You've been here before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is, uh, you, got, you got quite the show there, right? My goodness. Oh, this is Dr. Sass. Is, what, this is your third time, right, being on the show? Yeah. Yes, I think so. Almost, <laughs> I'm sure there will yeah. be more next year. <laughs> Just, uh, al almost number four. We had to cancel one because we were both going to lose our minds. <laughs> Too much stuff going on. But Dr. Sass, welcome. Welcome to the show again, and thank you for coming on in advance. But... Uh, you got a lot of stuff going on with eye telescope and, and don't forget we're going to be doing everybody stick around for the end of dr sass's conversation because dr sass has got an awesome giveaway for us and i'll, I'll leave that in his uh in his purview uh when he wants to announce that so yeah i'll, I'll try not make it too long because I, I know it's going to get tiring for some so we'll put more on the fun part okay how's that fair <laughs> enough fair enough awesome Okay, so, I'll get going if it's okay with you. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. The uh, screen sharing should be in the bottom. Oh, oh here we go again. Wait a second. I have to. I didn't know my uh, my Mac is going to ask me for permission again. I cannot believe. It. Oh, I that's right. That's second. right. One sec. One sec. One no sec. problem. No problem. Uh, oh my goodness. Entire, wait a minute, entire screen. Share. Yeah, you're just going to do the screen that you want. Yeah, let me just try. Am I sharing now or not? Yet? Not yet. Oh my goodness. Sorry about this. It's That's okay. No insane. problem. It, it happens. It's a live show. <laughs> wow. What is the Mac wanting? You know, this is one of the things I absolutely hate on the Mac. I'm going to ask you for the privacy. Let me try and work this out. No problem. Yeah, we, I remember to... there's something going on the last time that we had uh, <sighs> with the Mac. Come on. I clicked on it. So why is it not allowing? Wait a minute. Entire screen. Share. Choose what you want to share. I press share and nothing happens. Oh, I love this. <laughs> oh come on! <laughs> Can't see anything yet. Huh? Nothing. I, I just see you. You. It looks like you. You might oh, be just share, sharing your own. Uh, sharing the wrong screen, maybe. Okay. I can share. There this you one. go. You got it. Hey, great. So this one works. Okay, one sec. I'm gonna try. You cannot see my the, 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 the globular cluster at the moment, right? No. No, I see, I see the dashboard, okay, but I do have the uh, globular cluster if, we, if you want me to bring it up. Yeah, can you bring it up for a moment? I'm sorry because I'm, I didn't, I wanted to share my entire screen for a you're, you're talking business. about the giveaway, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Wait a so sec, I, maybe I, you got it, great. I can show it right here. Here you go. There you go. Okay, great. So, so this is the giveaway. It's a beautiful globular cluster. You get the whole image set, and that's going to be the fun part. <laughs> so, I won't talk too much, and then we'll we'll get going on that. One sec. Now I have to, I have to find you again, and you have disappeared. Wow. Well, right now I have the um, the. Uh, it looks like the eye telescope splash screen. So you have you have that. But if I switch over to this screen, I don't know if you see, what 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 do you see right now? Um, I see the eye telescope with the USA map on the left side. Okay, so hang on. 
if I you see the map right now? I see. I see the map with. I guess it's like a uh, bird's eye kind of image on the desktop. Yeah, and a few almost like thumbnails, maybe or something. That's the widgets for iTelescope. The widgets, yeah, the widgets. Thank you. Yep. Wait a minute. What the creeps? Gosh, this is difficult. I'm just sorry, I didn't anticipate this. Uh, oh dear, oh dear. Do you see? Do you uh, see the line? Where did the, where did the controls go? I don't know. Funny, last time I didn't have this problem. Now I have it. Okay, one second. Okay, I see what you. So yes. Okay, I see what I see what you see. Okay, great. Yes, I I can see it now. Okay, okay. so great. So let's let's get going straight away. My apologies. No problem. I'm going to. You see the expanded view now. I see it should be. No, you don't. Huh? It doesn't expand. No, it doesn't. Okay, so the screen is not following what I'm doing. Okay, let me try and ex explain at the moment what you see. So there's a small thumbnail of the map, which I was trying to sort of zoom in, but for some reason I cannot do that. I don't know why. But <laughs> if you look carefully, you'll see the moon in the center, yeah. and you'll see the sun on the side, okay? And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try and stop screen sharing and jump to the next one. So the, the, the main issue that we have at the moment is full moon. What I wanted to encourage everyone is that you can actually image during full moon and how to do that, right? Because that's always the big question, what you do uh, during full moon, um, except what Molly already mentioned is, is test your equipment. Um, but there is a lot more that you can do. So I'm going to try and jump in here now and see if I can share this. Let me see. Share screen again. Okay. Let's try this one. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So so what you should see there is is um, it's it's called a full moon declination demonstrator. It looks very complicated. Um, but um, the the moon is actually I mean if you don't know what the moon's gonna do you can go to software or telescopes or so on. But if you observe very carefully, you'll find out that the moon is actually dancing around in a very particular way, right? And that's depicted here on the northern horizon on the on the right hand side. I don't know, can you actually see my mouse move here? Yep. Or on, yeah we can probably, see that. Probably not. Yep. Yeah you can great. So we're here yes, on the sir. northern hemisphere. We're here on, on the northern hemisphere and um, at the moment, I don't. Yeah, um, maybe you'll be able to see this. This uh, the moon and the sun rotate. Wait a minute. Now it disappeared again. Here we go. Yeah, uh, it's the moving. Sun, uh, rotate. So what is depicted there is during full moon. You see the sun here on the lower hemisphere, and uh, that's during night time. And you see the moon right up. And now we're in December. And in December, the moon is very high up, as many of you know, because the sun is quite low during the day. And that means that actually imaging in the northern hemisphere is not that great, because when the moon's high up, you're already here at declination therapy, which, which corresponds to your latitude. And if you add that, it really illuminates the whole night. So this is the fun part. You can actually then go, if you have telescopes in the northern and southern hemisphere, you can take of the southern hemisphere because if you if you take um, if you take um, Charles Bracken and Mark uh, Max Whitney's wonderful book on the visible universe, which I will show you for a moment. Let me just stop sharing quickly. Let's see if I can do that. Wait a minute. Sharing. Okay, here we go. If you take their beautiful book here, The Visible Universe, which Charles I'm sure is going to talk about, and you look at the inside, you will see a whole map of the sky, which is absolutely exquisite what they've done. And as you see that, if you look downwards, you look to the south, and the more you look down, the more south you're looking, and the more up you look, the more north you're looking. And if you look right up on the on the very northern, you'll come to circumpolar um, objects such as M81 and M82. And if you go very much south, you come to um, the, the large Magellanic Cloud and the, and the small Magellanic Cloud, which are 
quite magnificent. So here's my point, and I'm sorry I, I can only show this in, in, in a little bit cumbersome way because if I done my share screen properly, it would have gone much better. But the point, <laughs> the point I'm trying to make is let's go and look at the large micro cloud. So I'm going to try and share my next screen now. Oh, wait, wait, talk uh, let's try that and see if I can share screen sharing. Well, let me just stop screen sharing. I see how this works. Wait a second. And I have to restart it. Okay. Um, yes, okay. I'm going to jump now into a telescope, or one of our telescopes, and that's T70. And T70, you can already see a beautiful picture here of Chile. So this is, Chile has the most exquisite skies in the world. There's no argument about that. They have 25, on the average, 25 clear skies, and I mean completely clear skies in the world, and nothing can compete with that, um, you know, if, you, if you're really looking for a lot of imaging. And if you want to image, you can use T70. That's a very um, wide field telescope, which is very nice for large objects such as my galaxy, which we call the Large Magellanic Cloud. And if you click here on Deep Sky Objects, you can put in an object name I already did, and that's one object that is in the Large Magellanic Cloud. <laughs> you, can look, you can look it up, and it'll tell you the rise time and so on. And then you can put the filter values in here, which I won't do at the moment because I'm trying to save some time, but you can choose typical 180 seconds and so on. You can do the same for red, green, and blue. Okay, I'm just going to stop share, and I'm going to assume now, and I just did this two days ago, I took these images, um, and I need to go to the next screen now. <laughs> Let me just go back here. Uh, let's see where the screen sharing was. Okay. Yes, we stopped screen sharing, so I'm going to start it again. And I'm now. Okay. Let's see if I can. Gosh, I wish I could share the entire screen, which it won't allow me to do. Uh, come on. So I need to go. Try this. This is so difficult because in the Mac I can just jump around from screen to screen, yeah. um, and I don't know. Can you see AstroPixel processor now? I don't know what. No, we just see you. Ah, uh, that's you don't you don't really don't need to see. Me. <laughs> 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 I'm so sorry. This is so difficult with um, with this in Zoom. I can just jump around, but here I cannot. Um, wow, I don't actually know how to do this because okay, camera preview window, and I cannot. It should be a just screen sharing button on the bottom, the red red computer, I think. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying to do that. If I say share screen now, it won't. It won't do it. It just I. I try, but it will not, it will just not share the screen. You know what, um, yeah, let's not worry about it. Okay. What I was hoping to show is how easy it is to, um, is, is to process these images. I was going to uh, process them in real time of a large Magellan cloud in five minutes and show you that even with full moon, um, uh, in AstroPixel processor, you can get an incredibly decent. Image. You can you can take out the the, the um, uh, you, you know the gradient, the luminous luminous uh, the luminous gradient straight away, and it's very easy. You end up with a beautiful image, which I can't show you. No, I'm yeah. so sorry. Next time we'll have to kind of just iron the bugs out for you we'll, because yeah, we'll, we'll we'll have to somehow see why it didn't work. But yeah, it should, it should um, work. It worked the last time, so. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, it, won't, it won't allow me to jump to the next screen, which is really So, hmm. anyway, okay. let's, not, let's not worry about it. Um, anyway, just imagine there was a nice picture <laughs> of the large pendulum. <laughs> and uh, I think you believe me that it's possible. 
Oh yeah, absolutely. We, we we've all seen your your work, and uh, it's it's pretty incredible. So. Yeah, but it's, it's not even my work, Dan. It's 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 what beautiful telescopes and and what we're trying to do is. I mean, Molly said a very important point on difficult astrophotography, which is I I really regret to agree with that. And what we're trying to do, and we are sort of halfway there, is to make it accessible. And that's the point I was trying to bring across. Is see, you know. You, you don't, if you're not technical and you just don't want to struggle with a lot of technical things that you want to access beautiful skies, you can at a reasonable cost for about $40 a month, you know, and during, you can you can access our telescopes and during that time you can take, during full moon we have free telescopes, you can take incredible images for zero cost. And that was what I was trying to bring across. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. um, yeah, while, while we're, um, we have you still. Um, maybe you want to talk a little bit about your work with AstroPixel Processor, um, and you know, getting started with that with Mumbula, and yeah. you know, you've done some really great work in there. And it seems like it's very, it's it is, um, a lots of pieces of it are very user friendly. You know, the the workflows are very good for beginners. And um, I like to get, you know, your thoughts on have you heard anything new or possibly um, any um, advancements that are coming up that you maybe can share that you that you're being aware of right now? Or even, you know, the tutorials that you put out with the eye telescope that, you know, when you're doing, you know, and your teams are doing processing. Yeah, my next tutorial. So that's a good question. I talked to Mabula. He's, he's a friend of mine. He's the uh, author and he's he's written this absolutely brilliant software called AstroPixel Processor, and I use it simply not only because it's for beginners, and as you said, it's very easy and intuitive to use, and I'm always looking for intuitive, easy ways, and you have to search a lot to find these ways, because, yeah, PixInsight is absolutely great. However, beginners will really struggle with it, right? That's, that's the point. It's a great software, but how do you get difficult things like astrophotography to to people so that they stay with it. Ninety-five percent of people that I teach um, buy equipment and they, they leave it in the garage and they never touch it again. And that's a topic that is yeah. never really discussed, right? You are among the five percent, or Molly or others, are among the five percent who have the endurance and maybe also the technical capability to continue. Unfortunately, that is not the case, and it's the same. Um, what I also find for image processing, so I did. A, I spent a lot of time looking for easy ways and that's my you know my, my emphasis and coming to your question now um, there's a stable version coming out called astropixel 2.0 so as soon as the better versions are over which should be fairly soon I'm going to launch some new tutorials for everybody and hopefully it's something that everybody can enjoy and that you can even you know if you think you can't produce a plot with uh, astropixel processor it's wrong because you can it's it's very stable um, but it's 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 really like that garbage in garbage out. If you've got good quality images, you can produce very good results. And uh, you know, AstroPixel process has has really nice work procedures. You know, Molly demonstrated very nice you know her work procedures, and that's what AstroPixel processor does in uh, very nicely in um, in in um, in the overview. You just click on one to the other, and you just work through the steps. And it's mm -hmm. always the same, and and that makes it very nice because you have more time to c concentrate on creativity, which you should, right? It's absolutely. So. Now, um, if not, because I think yeah. Daniel, you may have even told me that you um you were awarded with an APOD, yeah, um, for some work that you did for 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 a piece that you did, and was that completely with done within APP? Yes. You did yeah, that was APP. The final was, of course, Photoshop. Uh, we we did, but the, the 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 main thing, you know, this is the fun part. Um, I'm always trying to understand, you know, uh, trying to convey simplicity. And one thing I really like is the the uh, the the advent of color cameras that we're having. You can see big people, you know, the the, the famous guys like Damien Peach and so on. Who are using many more, even for planetary imaging, they're using more and more color cameras, and and that's be, that's not because you, um, you know they're trying something new, but that's because 
the quality is so damn good now. It's it's yeah. it's remarkable. And and that A pod was shot without a guide scope. It was 120 second images on on the Pleiades, and and uh, it's a color camera with with just an optical filter. That's it. That's it. So we had very good skies, and we just accumulated deep data, and that's it. It's simple. It's really simple. Yes. And the process yes. was very simple. It really was. And there's no magic. Anybody can do this, right? And that's really right. the message that we try and convey. It's nothing great. Apods are nothing great. It's 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 not. It's something anybody can do. You know, um, if you just have some patience and get the right equipment, you can do yep. this, right? Yep, that's awesome. Absolutely, absolutely, and uh, yeah, and it's relatively it's inexpensive. Uh, you mm -hmm. can even if you just to get started, I believe even just to rent. When I got started with APP, and I believe it's still the same now, fifty dollars US basically just to rent for a year of Astro Pixel processor just to yes. get started under and learn. And then yes. I believe then it's just another fifty to one hundred fifty dollars more, and then you can have the full license, or I believe it's around two hundred dollars to get the full license, and then you're done. Yep. And I mean, and it's basically really it's six, it's 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 six or seven tabs, you know, mm -hmm. six up to six tabs just to get everything integrated, you know, and then you have the final tools tab, which has a lot of great features in it now. Yeah. Um, that are, are really, really cool. The batch cropping. I've always loved the RGB combined because I even did a video myself um, utilizing a color camera and doing um, an SHO palette with a color camera using the RGB combined tool. It's been, you know, and it was great. Yeah. yeah. So um, it's a it's a lot of that. That is a really, really great piece of software. And for you to be utilizing that and to show that you you know while Pix Insight, I use Pix Insight myself. It's great, um, but I also start out everything with APP. Then I maybe throw into Pix Insight afterwards. But for APP, I have done tons of images that are just start to finish. You know, pretty much APP. Maybe a little bit of pick of uh, Photoshop tour or Lightroom at the end. You know, but after that, it's done. <laughs> yeah. So we we do have one quick question. Uh, you know, yes. and then we almost have to. I have to move on to the next guests. Um, <laughs> and, and we have one question, and we got to do the giveaway. So um, we want you to be around for that. Um, for sure. those of you that have recognized, I switched over to my real mic, so I sound like a normal person now. Um, <laughs> um, for, can you explain a little bit about what the credits are used for? Apparently, one of the viewers are a little confused about um, if you subscribe to a plan. 40 bucks a month what do i get for that um can you explain how the credit systems works really quick yes i uh, unfortunately i can't share my screen at the moment which which would make it easier but let me let me just explain it so so with uh, uh the 40 bucks uh, per month you get 40 points right and with that depending on the telescope you can use uh, a certain number of minutes up to an hour or so and um, that's that's really all it is about. And uh, in addition, the forty the forty bucks gives you access to premium images, which is really nice. So you get also a certain amount of images, like the one that I'm just giving away. Um, you you get that, and you get access to full moon happy hours. That means during full moon, there's ten days of full moon period where you can just for one hour per telescope. Um, can access that telescope and take your images as many as you can in, in that time, of course, respecting the time sharing that we have with others. So 40, 40 bucks on telescopes that are under $100,000, you know, on $50,000 to $100,000 on average and more, um, is probably quite a good value, <laughs> you know, because you can see how quickly you spend forty bucks at Starbucks. I mean, sure. you know. <laughs> it's like three, three, three cups of coffee or less. Yeah, <laughs> uh, around the corner, right? And um, so it's 
it's it's probably, and I'm not saying that because I'm from my telescope, but I really think it's a good value. I mean, look, I have backyard astronomy equipment too, but it quickly goes in the five, ten thousands, you know, before sure. you know it. It adds mm -hmm. up, and it's like Molly showed, it's a lot of dedication. You know, she's very good at what she does. However, don't be mistaken, it takes a lot of time, right? And Absolutely. And it's like, yeah, someone who doesn't just drive the car, but has to be able to open the engine hood and look underneath and really fix the engine. That's astrophotography for you, you know? And what we're trying to do is at least make it simpler and make it accessible also for education, which I find so important. You know, we, we're trying to bring it to children and so on and, 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 and to universities, especially undergraduates and so on. And, and that's something we also support quite a lot. Awesome. So why don't we get to the uh, the giveaway for, uh, for I'm going to pronounce this wrong forty seven two two canai uh, two, two you know I don't know where the name comes from two canai yeah two canai two canai I don't know I'm, I'm bringing the Brooklyn out the two it's a two canai it's a two canai so but it's, it's, a, it's an insanely beautiful globular cluster I mean if you you know, visually, it is so striking. If you're ever on the southern sky, I think that'll get you hooked to uh, to astro, astro uh, you know, even visual astrophotography forever. If you Absolutely. if you've seen something like that, M13, you know, um, yeah, 47 two is just overwhelming. overwhelming. Yeah, it is. And I mean, and if you you can take a look at the picture again, and I'll show it real quick. Yeah, and you show it because I. Can't. <laughs> there, there you go. That's the data set that um, Dr. Sass is giving away tonight. And yep. um, um, one lucky winner is going to win it. So let's see who's going to take – let's see who takes it home. There we go. Ready? Yep. Look at all those people on that. 346 people signed up for the, these giveaways. Yep. So here we go. Oh. Here we go. The giveaway for 47 Tuke. Here we go. Oh, and he's in the chat, Kevin Rasso. Hey, Kevin Rasso. And then what I'll do, Kevin, is I'll send you an email along with a copy to Dr. Sass, and Dr. Sass will let you know how to kind of sure. take uh, care of your your data set. And awesome. Congratulations, Kevin. Well done. Kevin Rasso, awesome. All right, congrats, Kevin. Yeah, he's in there saying sweet, thank you. You know, so. So, Dr. Sass, I'm sorry that we couldn't see everything on your screen. We'll, we'll get that ironed out. I apologize about that. And but, but, it's, it's okay. I also apologize. I didn't know. Otherwise, I would. You know, yeah, I'm German. I'm usually well prepared. But uh, you know what? And, so and it worked. It worked for two other shows. I don't know why it didn't work for this one. It's just Murphy's Law, I guess. I I, I don't know. But uh, but again, thank you so much, and uh, it, it's been great to have you. Okay, thank you. thank you so much, Dr. Sass. Have a good night.